This is the Volvo V90. And isn't it a beautiful looking car? I mean, do you remember when Volvo states were pretty much just like boxes on wheels? Thing is, you know, you do have to pay for this desirability. You see, this V90, it starts from £36,000. If you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk. You can then build your ideal car. You'll get five great offers back from top dealers within 24 hours. So then you can compare prices without having to haggle or from the comfort of your own home. Now, being an estate car, it makes sense to start at the boot. Thing is, right, the boot on this car is big and there's some nice features. The way you've got no load lift and the scuff plate so you can slide things in and out. The way the parcel shelf moves up out of the way when you open the boot. But it's not the best in terms of estate cars. For instance, the overall capacity is slightly less than a BMW 5 Series Touring. The difference between it and the Mercedes E-Class estate is even greater. In fact, the boot on this V90 is less than on the old 850 you just saw at the beginning of the video. But still, the size is going to be enough for most people. And it's a useful square shape. There's some features like a divider here like that. There's some extra storage there. And you can lift that up to do that on gas struts. One thing that I should point out is that you don't have a net that comes out of there. You can get one, but it's an optional extra. On a 5 Series, you get that as standard. It does mean, though, that actually removing this parcel shelf is pretty easy and it's nice and light. If you want to fold the seats down, once again, it's dead simple. There we go. Off you go. And then I can do the left one from here as well. And then you've got this huge flat low bay, which once again probably isn't quite as big as on the old 850, but still. That's pretty blooming big. Now, all V90s get an automatic tailgate as standard, but you can upgrade that for hands-free opening and closing. You just have to waggle your foot underneath, and there you go. Probably wouldn't bother with that upgrade personally, but hey, you know, it's up to you. It's there if you want it. So moving on to the back seat. Now, let me just get these out of your way. They are pretty heavy, to tell you the truth. Ooh. Okay, in terms of space back here, there's absolutely nothing to complain about. So, yeah, it's got loads of knee room. Headroom's good as well. This one's got the optional panoramic sunroof. It's got the blind over it at the moment because the light is so harsh that so I need to keep it covered up. Otherwise, you won't be able to see anything back here. But, yeah, headroom's fine. In terms of carrying three people at once, well, the middle seat is quite comfy. Yes, there is this huge lump in the floor, but it's all right. Well, it's all right with just me sat here in the middle. When you have two adults either side, it does feel a bit more cramped than in a Mercedes E-Class because the body of the car is slightly narrower. Now, if you click up there, you can actually see for yourself by watching my detailed practicality video where we'll fit three people in the back of the car. I'll also see how much stuff I can cram in the boot and show you how easy it is to fit a child seat. Speaking of which, the ice fix covers, which are down here, they're covered by these little flaps, which are attached at all times, so you won't lose them like you might do in some rival cars. Other things worth pointing out back here is that, look, I have a three-pin socket for charging things like laptops. That's really good. Now, door bins in the back, they're not bad. Fit a 750-litre bottle of water. There's some other things here. Look, so you've got this armrest. This has got a cubby in there. There's the cup holders there. But one thing that is a little bit disappointing is this. So, Unlike in a BMW 5 Series and Mercedes E-Class, you don't get three-way split folding seats. You do get a ski hatch, though. However, that's only for skis. If you like snowboarding, yeah, you wouldn't be able to carry a snowboard through the back of the car and have two people either side. And you could do in the Merc and the BMW. So Volvo drivers are clearly skiers and not boarders. Let's move into the front. Volvo has really upped its game in terms of interior quality. So. Everything feels pretty solid, nicely built. Yeah, if you look around, there's hardly any cheap feeling plastics. I don't think the quality is quite there with the Germans, but it's so close that it doesn't really matter. For instance, in an E-Class Estate and a BMW 5 Series Touring, you have an electrically operated steering column. You don't in the Volvo, but there's enough adjustment in it for everyone to be able to get comfy. And then there's the design itself. It's very Swedish, it's very minimalist, nice and simple, dead easy to use. And as standard, all models get this census portrait style infotainment screen. So to navigate through it, it's, it's all right. Some of the icons are a bit small. The navigation, which comes to standard, is good. And yeah, like I say, you can flick through various things and control the climate control through it. Though 
Sometimes you don't want to do that through a touch screen. It's easy to do with a dial like you do in other cars, but on the whole, it's very nice. Now, if you click up there, you can actually see my full in-depth video review of the infotainment system. And one thing I should point out, while Momentum cars are very well equipped with things like heated leather seats as standard and that Navi system, you don't get the digital driver's display, which you can get on the higher spec R design model and this particular inscription car. It's nice, the digital driver's display. I really do like it, and it's a worthwhile upgrade. In terms of storage, there's a little bit there, some more under here. The glove box, it's actually pretty big. It's got a separate shelf in there as well, and the door bins can just about take a large bottle of water. Right then, let's hit the road and see what this big estate car is like to drive. All V90s get an automatic gearbox as standard, and that makes them nice and relaxing to drive around town. The only thing is that the gearbox is a little bit lethargic. So you put your foot down and then this is what happens. So foot going down now. Accelerating now. I mean, that is such a delay. It means that you're going to miss a gap in traffic or the lights will have turned red by the time you get to them. It can be really frustrating. I can't complain about the comfort though. This car is generally pretty comfy. Be warned though, if you get the R-Design version, it has stiffer suspension and then you really do feel the bumps more. If you want the R-Design, pay extra for the adaptive suspension. Then you get air suspension on the rear, though to be fair, on a Mercedes E-Class estate, you do get air suspension on the back as standard. As well as the air suspension on the back of the car, you also get adaptive on the front. And then you have a comfort mode and then it just glides nicely over bumps and it's way better. In terms of the visibility, it's a big car and the back window is a fair way away, but it's large enough that you can see what's going on behind you. And if you want to check out the visibility yourself, click up there to have a look and join me in my 360 degree passenger ride video. Take this big old Volvo onto a twisty road and chuck it into a bend and you realise it does roll a little bit in the corners. It's not terrible though, it, it'll hold on. And this particular car's got four wheel drive, so you get a bit of added grip. If you get the D4 version, it comes as standard as front wheel drive. Rivals from BMW and Mercedes, actually rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. But it doesn't really matter that much. Not for most people, most of the time. This car will go around corners as well as you ever need it to. Don't think you're a boy racer if you're buying a big luxury estate car, because you're clearly not. The V90 is a really nice, relaxing cruise. You can do miles in this car, stress-free. Seats are super comfortable, it's quiet, goes over bumps well, especially with the adaptive suspension on this car. It's all very, very pleasant. The only thing that kind of spoils the ambience is the diesel engine in this car. So when you put your foot down and rev it, it can sound a little bit gruff. And unlike with something like a Mercedes E-Class or a BMW 5 Series Touring, you can't get a smooth six-cylinder diesel. I can't fault the performance of this engine though. So 0-60 of this D5 diesel, it's, yeah, it's seven seconds. And economy's all right as well. So I'm getting, I'm getting 45 miles per gallon. It's not bad, well done Volvo. Now it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about the Volvo V90. There's no S specific within the car to hold the low cover when it's not in use, so you just kind of have to leave it lying around. When you lay the seats on the right, it automatically releases the headrest for the seat on the left, which means you can whack a passenger on the head. It's a bit of fun, actually. You can carry about 160 less kilos in the boot of this car than in a Mercedes E-Class estate, which is about the weight of two people. The rear windows don't wind all the way down, so it's not that comfy doing that. I like to do that. The noise from the ventilation fan is so loud. I mean, this is on setting two. If I put it on maximum, it's like being stood in a blooming hurricane. Thankfully, the V90 has plenty of cool features, which helps make up for all this. Here's five. The panoramic glass sunroof truly is panoramic. It's massive. The optional Baz and Wilkins stereo has 1400 watts, 18 speakers and a concert hall mode with surround sound. The Auto City braking can spot cars, cyclists, animals and even people. <laughs> Thank God it worked. You can get the car with fold-out booster seats in the rear for kids. This car doesn't have that option. So I'm just going to use this instead to illustrate what it would be like. Whee! The washer jets are integrated into the windscreen wipers for a more efficient clean. Also means I can say that here without getting sprayed. Yeah, 
If you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk for more information and to compare offers on the Volvo V90. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the V90. It may not have the biggest boot of a luxury estate car, but it is the best looking. But that's my opinion anyway. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe to our channel. Also click on the video windows for more car wow videos. Now then, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the Swedish house mafia playing on the car stereo.